<clears throat> good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J Man Monero coming to you live with J Man Speaks with J Man's Ed Talks, actually. Number 10 with my man Terrence Yonker from Orlando, Florida. Today we're talking about assistance, virtual, in person, technology, apps, programs, just anything you can do to take your business to the next level. Uh, I just want to start out by saying this is the first time you've tuned in. If you like what you hear, share it, okay? Share it with the world. Um, and as we're going through, if you comment below in the comments below, you can comment auto agent, okay, VA stuff, any number of things. But what that will do is we'll send you a an automated one sheet on virtual assistants, you know, things that kind of help you with your business. But let's get started with introductions. Mr. Terrence Yunker, a.k.a. Terry, a.k.a. Automated Agent from Orlando, Florida. Thanks for being with us today, sir. Sure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> So just tell us brief, like, you know, Reader's Digest version, your your background, why you're the automated agent. Well, I've been doing this now for 14 years. And after about three or four years, I found myself doing the same repetitive tasks over and over, you know, going on a listing appointment, signing the same docs, uploading stuff on MLS. And I read all the books that said, oh, you, you know, you get to a certain level, you start building a team. So I, I did a first hire and then that didn't work out in the second hire and third and I started over again and thought there had to be a better way. So I started playing around with virtual assistants and then my daughter was born. She's six now and that kicked into high gear and it wasn't playing anymore. Then I kicked it because I found myself doing stupid repetitive stuff and mm -hmm. uh, I didn't want to miss anymore. So I got serious about it, outsourced about 80% of my day to day real estate tasks to virtual assistants for three to five bucks an hour. And you still work. We're not retired yet, but now you've, I focus more on listing presentations, closing, building relationship, and the a lot of the marketing and, and administrative stuff uh, we have outsourced now. That effect. Yeah. So, so just to recap, you know, I, I met Terry a, a few years ago. I might be going on five years, I think now. Yeah. And his story really resonated with me because I'm, I'm the same way. I got two kids, three and eight, and it's like we spend so much of our day wasting time on stuff that makes us no money you know just like right. you said repetitive tasks and 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 whether you're an agent who wants to do more business or maybe you just want a better quality of life meaning you're not wasting time on stuff that makes you no money you you waste the time not waste the time but invest the time on income producing activities then you go home when you want to go home and spend time with your family and i think you and i are in the same boat there uh, but if it's somebody else who's a workaholic no kids do what you want to do. Hey, you can work more, make more money, right? Right. Okay. So let's let's get into it. like when is it? When is the right time? Like at what point in somebody's career? I mean, hopefully if they're watching this, it's because they kind of have that question. Like when is a good time? I feel like I'm busy, but I don't know. I feel like hiring somebody in my office is expensive. I know nothing about virtual assistants, and I'm not very familiar with technology. When's the right time? Well, you know, for everyone is different. You know, I was pretty hard and fast. Like for me, it was my daughter and getting texts and missing that. Um, for someone else, it might be that what am I doing at 10 o'clock typing up contracts or entering listings or whatever that click is, it's different for every person. And uh, that's when, the, so you'll know. And then when you go into the next step, it's you just want to start outsourcing the things that are easiest. And, and you know, if we tell you that entering listings is $3 an hour work, if... Um, filling out contracts is $3 an hour work. Then when you get that realization, like, Oh my God, I'm doing If You know, if you're doing it, you're working for $3 an hour. So right. it's more my, and I remember in black and white too, a, a big break point for me was when I went on a listing appointment the day before and I saw the caller ID, the guy was calling me the next day, which I thought correctly that he wanted me to list his house. And I was looking at it and I let it go to voicemail because on the other side I had three, listings that I had to put in and do all the stuff right? and I couldn't right. make another one. So I was at my capacity and I look back now, I'm like, this is a guy who wants to help me build my business, make more money, build my career. And I'm putting him to voicemail because I've got to set up my photographer for three listings. And that was my break point. So I think every agent has something like that where they're thinking, what in the world am I doing? Not going to sign this listing because I have to line up my photographer for a couple listings. So that's that's when you know it's going to be different for everyone. Yeah, and I think for me, kind of along the same lines, like when you start to get stressed out, 
like you start to feel anxious, like, oh my gosh, I'm overloaded. I have so much to do. And if you really just took a second, just one second, take a step back, took out a piece of paper and said, here's all the things that I have to do. And then looked at what do I, I have to do as the real estate expert, as the rainmaker, as the one who knows about real estate in my area, what do I have to do? You know, that was an eye opener for me. Number one, number two, when you start providing a lower level of service, meaning like maybe you don't get back to somebody because you forgot, like you meant to and you didn't call them back or you were supposed to send that contract to the attorney and you're like, oh my gosh, it's the, and you need attorney approvals. Like when your business starts to suffer and it's hard for us ego driven people, like, hey, let's face it, some real estate folks sometimes are ego driven to say that we, our business is suffering because we're not taking the right steps to grow the business or put the systems in place. And I think just like you said, everybody's so different. Everybody's business is so different. So there's no blueprint that we can give them today, but we can give them all the options and kind of figure out what's right for them. So what was the, after you, you hired an in-office person that didn't work for you, right? So yeah. Yeah, I found out real very quickly that I'm a pretty crappy manager of people, <laughs> you know, and that's a skill you can build and everything else. But, you know, most of us, if we're in this business, it's because we're relatively independent and we that's just how we're built, you know. And so right. I, yeah, I have to take the blame for every one of my several uh, assistants that didn't work. And uh, <laughs> one, I was bailing out of jail so she could show up. And then I finally got the perfect one. And tell me if you've had this, you have the perfect one. She's working. Everything is wonderful. And her husband got a job transfer to the Virgin Islands. Oh, so man. there I am again at square one. So that's when I, you know, with the virtual assistant started coming in where it's almost interchangeable, you know, where, like you said it before, uh, J man with the systems. So I found I was missing, even with a good person, if you don't have the systems or the blueprint that you can, when they move for a job transfer that you can't give to someone else, then you don't have a business, you have a hustle. And that's what I found is that once my in-house person left the third one, um, I said, <laughs> I realized I had a hustle because I was there at square one and everything was in my lap again. I was like, oh man, how am I gonna, and I didn't even realize what I did, you know, like what was my 10 steps to prepare for a listing? I don't know, she, she knew. Right. Like, so, but that's when you start realizing and you document. And so now we have systems and, you know, steps I can articulate exactly to you or to a customer, the 10 to 15 steps that we do to prepare for a listing. Once we get a signed listing, the 10 to 15 steps, timelines where you couldn't do it before. You just said, oh, my assistant, handled. she's great. I love her and or him. And that's not a business as I found out the hard way. So I think what I'm kind of what I'm hearing you say is like putting together an operations manual, right? Like any, any franchise, any business, real business that you invest in will have an operations manual. That's why McDonald's is so su successful. You can buy one and you can make money day one, not day one, but you'll make money because it's all documented. All the systems are in place. So what are the ways you kind of laid out your systems? Like what are the 10 steps to a listing? What are the ways that you change it from active to pending? all the intricacies of your business how was that so you don't have to communicate it again and again how did how did you do that yeah so that's when you get into the how you know like when we teach our, our ce course on this it's rah rah up until this point it's like i, right. I get that but right. how do i get from this right i don't even know what i do you know so it's really a simple three-step process that we used and that we teach at automated agent and, and the first one is you know no one wants to sit down and teach and do this so the first step is just do video recordings kind of like we're doing with your screenshot uh we use a program called screencast omatic but there are programs like jing any screen recording software where you just do because if i ask you what are your 10 steps 99 percent of the realtors aren't going to know so what you do is get a real listing so when you have a signed listing agreement for example and you should just start doing and talking and say, okay, I log into the MLS here. Okay, now I go to the tax records to pull this parcel ID. Da, da. Now I have to oh, order pictures. So my photographer is Joe. I send an email to Joe. You have three days. So all these standards, that's what they are, standards. You know, the, the standards you have in your business. I demand that Joe is the photographer is out there and say two days or whatever. My pre-listing inspection happens within two days. And here's the number I call. So that's the first step. You record it all, and then you have one big mess, like a 30-minute recording, let's say. 
then that's when the VA comes in because if you're a halfway successful agent, you're probably not the type to sit down and, you know, it's a different skill set, right? Like if you're out doing that, you're, you're not going to be the best one to transcribe. Right. Yeah. You know, they're not going to be the one typically to transcribe and do all that. So with that, you give it to your virtual assistant that we can talk about that later, how to get them and what to do there. And then say, break this into the steps. Don't figure it out. Don't do anything. Just, you know, write down the 10 to 15 steps the systems that I use, everything. And then you have the start of a manual. Then from that, you say, take that same video and put the screen grabs in there. You know, like from there where you pause it, do the snip. And then so that's a step they can put arrows in. And then the third step then, so that first is record. Second is do that. Then the third, just hand it to someone and test it out. Like you can give it to someone that's not, you know, doesn't know your business. Someone in the office say, hey, I'll pay you, you know, 50 bucks. Can you enter a listing? Follow this. Don't tell them anything else. Because right. then they can go through and say, oh, where do I get the login for? Ah, uh, that's a step that you missed. And then that's how you refine it until it's ultimately. Now, that sounds great and easy, right? Like one, two, three, bing, bing, bing. <laughs> but I think, you know, you need the iterations. Like you won't realize what you just do without realizing it. You won't realize, oh, of course, you just log into the, you know, my Dropbox. Well, what's the login and password? Oh, you don't have that. How do you? You know that all these things fit in and so you finally have like a machine that's that's running. You just do that for each part of your business. You know, it's important to you. So let me just, um, the steps you have here. So the first one is record, like with Screencast-O-Matic or, or whatever. The second yes. part of that would be transcribe or record what's being recorded. How, how do you want to put that? Document? Put that break into, break into steps. Okay. Break, it, break your video into written, actionable steps transcribe and make steps. And then the third is test it. Third is hand it off and do. That's right. That's right. And with somebody that doesn't know your business as intimately as you do, and they're going to ask questions that you would say, of course, you just log in to, oh, it's not an of course. It's an of course to you because you've been doing it the same way for five years. And that's, you know, you have blind spots that you don't even realize that you have. Yeah, I think that's a great point there. Like when you're doing it, like if I were to just enter a listing, I'd be sitting here going, you know, typing away, entering in the listing, but it's almost like your your online, like an online video diary going, okay, so now I'm going to go into my MLS and in the MLS, I'm going to need my login and password. And then I'm going to make sure that I have all this information about the property. I need to make sure I have my public remarks and make sure I have my private remarks because we encounter the same thing. Like I usually think of my public remarks and private when I get to that part of the listing. I wasn't right. used to doing it. Right, doing it ahead of time, and then I think this was another eye opener for me. You mentioned this in the you outsource your remarks, even right? Like you, you have a person who writes, who's a writer, writes your remarks, right, for the listings. Absolutely, and that's you know like step fourteen. So yeah. you went through that exactly like I did. Like I go through, and I would do the same thing. And I'm a, I'm not very a very good writer, but it's not my thing. I'm okay, but that's right. when I said, hey. So now we go, we back up. So as soon as that listing comes in, my VA sends them any kind of Zillow information, public records, what I want to emphasize on the property goes on to Fiverr, which is a site we'll talk about. And then my guy spits out within a day, a nice description. And, and that's, that's another part that I never, you know, you, you just start piecing the same thing with photographer, pre-listing inspection remarks, this team that you can build without having a team, you know, and it's, right. uh, pretty powerful what we can do now as individual realtors that you know only companies at scale could do before and I, and I think it's important to recognize like you're the expert in real estate you're not a copywriter like you're not good at writing copy you're not good at writing period or else you'd be a writer for a living and I think too often I look at these remarks and I don't know how many people can say that this property boasts you know real cream puff this one won't last <laughs> like yeah, oh, come on, right. man. Like, have, do better. Do better. Your, our clients yeah. deserve better. So if you're not good at it, definitely doesn't hurt to uh, to to give but it away. The, or the, be the beauty it. of that one too is you can get analytic. I'm an analytic type guy, and so we start pulling from our Florida Realtor magazines. They measure. They did a study. What words sell? What words don't? So we're not again just winging it. So when we send an order to my guy. He gets that article on the words that we want to use and words that we want to avoid, kind of like you're speaking to, Jeremiah. But it's yeah. it's 
analyzed. It's not just, oh, I, I think it's like from Florida Realtors. This is a study that someone spent thousands of hours doing that we can benefit from. And then we give it and they implement the words that we know. We don't guess. We know our work, that they work and that the ones that don't, we avoid. Well, we, we have a special treat today. Uh, we have to, do you want to kind of give the intro to who we're, we're going to have another person on from the Philippines, correct? Correct. From the Philippines. All right. So Terry, Terry, I'll, I'll let you kind of do the intro and then I'll bring her up to the screen while you're talking. Yeah, sure. Sure. So happy to do it. When we started, I went on, again, sites that we'll show you before, onlinejobs.ph that we're going to get into. I hired her and her husband at $3.50 an hour and basically built my business and documented everything. You know, little did I know I had such special people. They are so good at it. They now have a shop over there in the Philippines. They open an office and they have 25 to 30 agents now that do administrative stuff. I was sad to lose them and them for myself, but now at least they can multiply their efforts. So now they have a 25 to 30. They do administrative stuff. They do prospecting. They work for other industries. They have a full office, backup electricity and backup Internet, which to us in America doesn't sound like much. But in some of these countries, that's a big deal. And so uh, Shine Labro is here and her husband's Nephi is the one that, that was the word that we worked with for, oh man, I guess it's been seven, eight years ago now that we started with. And now they're just, they're just cranking right along. Had a, had a chance to visit them about a year or so ago. Uh, they were hosts and, you know, got to see their home and their operation and everything. It was a real treat to finally see them uh, in the Philippines. So Shine, welcome to, welcome to the show. Hi, everyone. So, yes, my name is Shine. I uh, was formerly a Terry's uh, VA marketing. I was in charge of marketing and uh, personal stuff. So I did all that for him, uh, booking tickets, uh, booking rental cars when he's traveling. So I did all that kind of stuff. And I also did all the marketing um, through his CRM. So um, I was a VA for about um, two years. And uh, Nephi was very CPA for about four years. And uh, we decided, uh, because of Terry's idea, we started, we decided to start a small team of virtual assistants. Nice. But we wanted to do everything right. So um, we decided we want to register, um, we want to register our team and um, build the company. So uh, VS is uh, um, a registered um, outsourcing company in uh, the Philippines. And yes, we started out with about five VAs. Most of them uh, were from clients referred by Terry. And uh, now we do have um, a growing team of uh, 25 uh, oh. virtual assistants. So I would love to show you around their office uh, operations, but most of them are on lunch. And um, right now we are um, operating using um, the second floor and the third floor of this building. So uh, we separated those people who are uh, doing calls and we separated the ones who are usually uh, doing the admin um, stuff so uh, they don't get distracted because some of them, some of the, the general VAs would complain, oh, um, the ISAs are very noisy. So we had to separate them into two floors. So the IAC, closing guy. We want that. We want them on their closing. They're closing FISBO yeah, appointments. They're right. closing the right. fire departments. That's what we like, right? So, yeah, it's so setting appointment. So uh, they wanted to be um, separated from uh, the general VAs too. They um, they didn't wanna um, they didn't wanna uh, they didn't want this team um, distracting them from doing administrative stuff. So um, yeah. So right now, um, we do have uh, two group of virtual assistants. Most of them, I mean, real estate virtual assistants. So um, one group are general admin uh, VAs. So they help out with um, their, their clients with preparing listing documents, advertising, uh, managing social media, managing their emails, all kind of um, back office stuff. And the other group, they're mostly focused on um, the ISAs. They're mostly focused on following up with clients. They do a little bit of admin stuff, but mostly following up with clients and um, setting appointments like expired, FISBOs, just sold. So um, everything that um, everything that a normal realtor would do uh, when prospecting. It's just that, um, of course, they're not licensed. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, so that's what we mostly do here. Yeah. Um, 
So um, it's okay. been a great journey with Terry. Without um, Terry, we wouldn't have built the uh, VS. And VS is actually, um, it stands for virtual assistance. So um, we came up with this idea because of uh, Terry. So we're very grateful. And our team is very grateful to you. Terry is a great guy. So just a couple questions, and I, hopefully we have some folks that might ask some questions that are watching live. But as far as the folks who are doing like the follow-up calls and the calling on FISBOs and expires and stuff like that, is there any kind of language barrier challenges there? You know, like do people ever ask where are you calling from? Or Because I'm sure that's in the back of people's minds who are watching right now. Like how do you handle that? Well, um, so far right now, we haven't encountered that particular issue yet because usually when a client wants an ISA, like someone uh, to do the calls for them, um, we would hire someone who is uh, better when it comes to verbal communications. Um, yeah. With uh, general VAs, we do have a lot of um, general VAs who are not um, very uh, competitive when it comes to their verbal communication skills, but they're good at writing. Right. and they're good at doing admin stuff so we hire them for uh, general vas but when someone needs an isa from us we usually make sure that uh, we usually hire someone who already has a bpo experience because as you know uh, the philippines um, is the number one i think we're still the number one um number one outsourcing um, country in um, asia so most of our, uh, we have a lot of talents here who came from um, call centers and from big contact centers like Converges, um, Accenture, those large companies. So um, we, the good thing about VS is we are located in a small city and um, um, we, a lot of talents here in San Carlos would usually visit the capital cities in um, Manila or Cebu or other uh, big cities in the Philippines to get employed, but we brought, um, we are the first um, legal um, outsourcing company in the city. So uh, we brought the outsourcing or the contact center um, company in the city. So most of those who, uh, most of those who are from the city who used to work in capital cities like Manila and Cebu, uh, they went back home. So most, um, our employees now, they used to work for big contact center companies, and then they went back home to be with their families and um, applied as virtual assistants at VS. Nice, okay. So what, what kind of technology, because this is the other thing I know is people are thinking about, like they're so used to having somebody in the office that they can just come in, talk to. Mm -hmm. what, is the, what kind of technologies, and maybe Terry, you can chime in on this as well. What kind of technologies do you guys use to communicate just as if you were you know, right next door rather than across the world? Um, usually it's Skype. Like Skype. when we were with uh, Terry, when he wants to throw um, tasks to us, he would throw it through Skype. If he doesn't have the time to type, he would record himself um, uh, giving instructions and send it to um, Skype. But some of our clients are also using WhatsApp. WhatsApp, okay. Uh, as a mode of communication, <laughs> but most of them are Skype. I think that's the most convenient um, way to do it because you can also do video calling on Skype and send out um, video uh, video messages. Yeah, and that's 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 one of the hacks that really, when you start getting used to that, you'll never go back. So you know, a lot of us don't type, or things come up in the day when yeah. you can just grab your phone, record, and say, "Hey, Shine, I just met with Joe Smith. They're thinking about listing in four days. Put them on the." you know, hot seller program and send them his kids graduate and send them a gift. His address is in the CRM. Thanks. Click. And you go by your day. Like how powerful does that get, you know, and you know that shine and FI are just capturing all that. And, uh, you know, after every meeting, just it's just, that's what's powerful and addictive. That's probably the most addictive thing. Just knowing that they're there waiting and they're working and then boom, it gets done because we forget. Uh, I forget. I can speak for myself. I forget stuff. So, that's that's the most addictive part and so what kind of like besides that like how do you know being the person here terry like the agent like what you delegated for the control freaks that need to know when things are done like i don't like i i would feel confident that if i delegated something to shine she's gonna take care of it like i don't have to worry yeah. about it it's done 
but there's a, that other personality type out there that's like, well, I need to know. I need to know everything that's going on. Like, what kind of system is there in place, or what do you use for that? Like, do you use like a Google Keep or Slack or anything? Well, that, I don't know. Yeah, that that's a great question, and that's where again, you know, as I, I've used other people as well with virtual assistants, you're absolutely right. That's one where, wait, I, I put this in, why isn't this done? So all this in conjunction with a good CRM is, is crucial because the step is with what, like I just said, say, hey, send them a, a gift for their kid that's graduating. The right. next step is not to do that. Okay, the next step is to enter it into the CRM so that I can see it. And then because there's gonna be, by the, when you go crazy and you start to rapid firing tasks, Priority prioritization becomes key, and that's advanced. I'm glad you asked that question, J Man, because that's the next step. So now you get you go crazy on this, and we start giving somebody five, ten tasks. What's the most important? You know, I got a listing appointment in an hour, but you're entering CRM data, right? So that's that goes into a CRM. We use Realvolve. We've used Wise Agent in the past. A great one that we use for project management management is Asana. I mean, that's a game changer as well. So. The next step is not to do your VA puts it all in and then you can prioritize, you know, with a daily meeting or you can even say, hey, this is task A1. This goes now ahead so that they know what to do and then they can just go through and then you can see it checked off or not. Like there's no gray, you know, it's either there or it's not there and checked off. And we had it in Wise Agent where, you know, they when you get done with the task, the VA checks it and it shows up with a line through it. They are not allowed to delete it because only me as the agent, I can go through and see that it's done. And then I clear them so that, like you say, for control freaks, we we know that it's done. Peace of mind, you know, like in the beginning for everybody, I'm just going to put this up here, CRM or Asana, it's A-S-A-N-A -A -A for task management or Slack is very popular as well. Um, but I think just for peace of mind in the beginning, for those who are used to having somebody in the office, that first few months is like, you're learning to trust each other, right? Like you're learning right. to trust that it, maybe this actually will work because we're so skeptical sometimes, we're our own worst enemies. Like there's a way that somebody from across the planet can do what somebody in the office could do. And I think that's, we know that's not true, right? right. Right. So, Shine, anything else you want to add? I'm going to let you get back to uh, work. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, right now I'm actually helping out um, our virtual assistants. Some of them are new with their clients. So um, we work as a team. Um, when someone is experienced on this particular um, tool, we would help the other one. So right now I'm also helping another one. We just got a, a new client um, signed up. So um, I'm helping her out. But, um, yeah, I hope I it. I know that for um, realtors who didn't have any experience with working with virtual assistants, it, you, th you think it could be uh, something that's difficult, something impossible. But once you get the hang of it, um, once you uh, realize what your um, virtual assistants can do, especially um, uh, taking that time away, um, doing all the admin stuff, prospecting, if uh, there's something that someone else can do for you so you can focus on what matters most on your business, I highly recommend, we do highly recommend getting a virtual assistant to help you out with that. And I'm sure um, life would be a lot uh, easier for you. Nice, thank, thank you so much, we're, we're, we appreciate your time. And we're, we're gonna plug your company in the comments of the video so that you know, if anybody's looking to hire a virtual assistant, now they've met you, they've heard you, they've interacted with you, um, they will feel comfortable hiring your company. So thanks again for your time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thanks, Shane. All right. All right, that was awesome. Yeah. I think, you know, it's it's so, well, in real estate especially, seeing is believing, right? So that's why I, was, I so, so wanted to have them on the show because it's like we could be like yeah Bert, it's easy it's easy it's easy but then they see boom she pops on she hops on we can have a conversation she talks about everything that they do it's so much better than just talking about it yeah yeah no she let the cat out of the bag there when she got into you know i started going bonkers on this stuff and she was doing all my personal stuff 
So I would even, even now I still do it, but it started with her. I said, Hey, I, I want to play tennis here. My guys, you know, I just <laughs> line up tennis for me next week. Right. And then I got a rental car. I'm going up to Rochester. Can you just get a good plane ticket, get my rental car up there set up? And, you know, we're staying at the Tego Palooza and it's, I mean, it's once you go down the road, it's addictive. You know, I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Like when I get in there. So it's uh, <laughs> and you see they're competent college educated people just really just, they're just great. I mean, it's once you go, it's it's hard to go back, you know. So we, we got a question from Carlos here, um, Carlos Amaya. So just got connected how much are the fees? Yeah. So you want to just touch sure. on that besides the hourly? Yeah, sure. Set up in that? Absolutely. So the two there's two ways you can go again with virtual assistants. Like when I started with them, I hired them directly, home-based with all that entails. That meant crying babies, internet outage, just like a home-based person. And with that, you go one to one and you can get them for I pay a flat five hundred dollars a month full time, which works out to about three dollars an hour. And they're there full time. They're sitting there. They're ready and they're going through your checklist and they're at home. But again, it's working in their bedrooms and, you know, it's it's uh, that that dynamic. No backup Internet. They have Internet. They have electric outages over there sometimes. So all that's wrapped in. Right. Or you can go the next step to where. It's someone like Shine in their shop where they have an office, backup generators, backup internet, they're supervised, the SOP, they're experienced. And that's still only about $10 an hour. And you can get them as low as 20 hours a week, which is a minimum wage, I think, in New York. I don't know what it is in New York, but that's still like you can. Uh, 1250 I think, right? Something like that. 1250 Yeah. So less than minimum wage, you still have people that can do all that stuff and, have, and Shine supervises them, trains them. You got a little taste of it. So it's... Uh, it's just a matter of what step you want to enter in. And if you want to just start with a 350 just to like, it's really for you. They can do it. It's clear the whole system's there, but it's more for an agent say, hey, I'm going to let me try to spend 20 or 50 bucks just to try this out and have a conversation like I just did with Shine and J-Man did. Um, it's a great way to start. So, yeah, so 350 to 10, but no more than 10. And I, I just I think, you know, I always people ask, OK, so what's my first very first step? Because we can even say this is what you got to do. Just call them. Well, before that, what do I do? Because some people are, they get par paralyzation from analyzation. Then they start going, I want to think about all the different companies that are out there and let me weigh the pros and cons and blah, 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 blah. I think the first okay. step for most folks would be just to journal what you do in a week, right? I mean, you could maybe add to this, but just take a little, a little diary or whatever and say everything that you do every single day and how much time it took you, it will boggle your mind how much time you waste on stuff that's not real estate related or stuff that really you can delegate, stuff that you could get off your plate. And it sounds scary when you look at it because then you're like, man, I'm really only working two hours a day. <laughs> you know, right. it, it makes money. The rest of the time I'm going, oh, let me organize my desk or, oh, I had coffee right. with the guys at the office. Oh, I had a lunch meeting. You know, things, you may want to have lunch, obviously, but it's not income producing. Would you say that's a good first step? Kind of figure out what you do every week. That that's a good first step uh, to write it down. Uh, to write down or even record something that you know you do repetitively. Just so you ha you're right, Jamin. Just so you have something to grasp because we want you to take a baby step. And you know, to what you're talking about, income producing activities. You know, what I do, Floyd Wickman training, and that's what. If you're on track and you have three listing appointments a week then go ahead, play with the font, the colors of your postcards and everything else that you want to do. Right. But if you are not on track and you're not prospecting and you haven't had your three listing appointments a week, then uh, you know that's your gauge because you're right. It's kind of great. What am I even doing, right? What's income? I'm fiddling with this. So that that's a good gauge. You have the luxury of fiddling with your postcards and everything if you're on track and you made your three listing appointments that week. So yeah, or if it's idea. something, what we always say, if it's something that's therapeutic in a way like some people like I Brent Lancaster you know when we were talking the other day and he's like I love cutting my grass like for him yeah, cutting yeah. his grass it's like an hour where he can just zone out and it's relaxing for me I like to get my car washed it's strange I like to get my car washed and like clean the inside and I feel like clean car clean mind like I could have somebody do that of course but me doing it is therapeutic right, right? it's almost yeah. like zen if you will right. So, right. Yeah, yeah. Totally. So, let's say they. How do they analyze kind of like how much of that is, is virtual and and what if they have a high they want to do like a hybrid model like for us we have an operations manager her name is Amy she's fantastic, she's gonna be with us until she's old and gray, and, 
I'm not just saying that because she's behind me. Um, <laughs> but we're, we're kind of working on, like, we want her to concentrate, too, on high-level stuff and figure out what she can delegate and get off her plate. What can we delegate for her at 3 to $5 an hour? So, like, what what's the next step? What's the next level? Well, the next level, again, having gone through – Basically, everyone can arrive at the same spot or you can take a shortcut, you know, and kind of where we are and what we found that was great to start with virtual assistants. It's important and we shouldn't be doing it is your contacts and getting them on a sphere marketing plan, because as we're out chasing all these Facebook leads and everything else that we know are converted about two percent. We've got a whole group of people that like us, trust us, respect us, would refer us that we haven't talked to in yeah. months, you know, so that's. If someone's going to start it, that would be the first thing I'd say. It's like, hey, you have a whole bunch of contacts in your Google contacts and your CRM and you're just a mess. <laughs> We've even packaged it to where you say, hey, have a VA go in, put 200 people on your drip that you define. You know, we give you kind of a, a Gary Keller 33 touch type model, but you can modify it and say, before you do anything, they're going to look up all their data, mailing address, email, phone number on Google with these steps that we give them. Put them all in a drip that you've designed. You have a template and go. And that right there, that tedious work, but it's so important because now your sphere is hearing from you every couple of weeks or posting, get seen your Facebook, but whatever it is, that's usually a good first step because there's, I can't tell you how many times we've, you know, talked to agents that are going down this route because they're busy. And it's kind of like you said, Jay, man, there are things we know we should be doing, but we're not. And that's usually it because it's not right now stuff. You know, you get this hot Facebook lead and you're jumping all around, but what about Mr. and Ms. Havabush that you sold a house to three years ago? They're ready to move. They like you, trust you, respect you, but they haven't heard from you. So that's what I would recommend a first step, getting into the people that you've already put in the legwork, reap the rewards. You've already built a relationship. All those years of you know toil, you have a – that really, at the end of the day, that's your business, right? Your database and, and people that you work with. So that would be a great first step to clean that up. Yeah, I, I think uh, we always say that too, like – your database is the lifeblood of your business. Like that is your business that 30 years from now, if you want to retire and sell something, yes. right? It's the, it's your database. It's your people that you've worked with who like no one trusts you and who will trust anybody that you then hand your business off to for, for future, you know, for the future. That's something that's tangible and can be sold. And I think a lot of agents don't think like that. They just think they're just going to list until they, are ready to die <laughs> or become, you know, realtors don't, they don't die. They just become listless. Right. That's what we always say. Right. Right. <laughs> kind of fade right. Away. But I think it's, yeah. you want to have an exit strategy and get your investment properties and invest in real estate and then sell your, you know, the, the database. That's definitely a great point that I think almost every class I talk about, we talk about databases, man. It's like really it's nothing more important. Well, there's right there's a lot of right now business in there too. You know, and that's the, always the big surprise. You get in there and all of a sudden it's cleaned up and scheduled. You're scheduled to just make five hello, how are you calls? Oh, I was just thinking about you. Oh, hey, are you I mean, that's business, you know, that's context. And you you still have to do it. You know, this isn't, hey, give it all my VM, I'm gonna go play golf. They right. do the eighty five percent, but there's still that one thing that you have to do, which is just Hey, did you know that there's a fe are you going to the festival this week that's coming to town? Yeah, we're gonna be there. How are the kids? You know. Mm -hmm. that lock that they're not going to list with anyone else or when they their people come to town they're thinking of you there's a lot of right now business in there and that's what that's what floyd wigman teaches that's the sphere from keller williams that's the whole yeah brian uh, Buffini. yeah brian buffini the whole thing is is based in that core so what about the, like the technology side of it so like let's say somebody is really not quite there like before i decided to do the assistant route I went to technology, right? I was always like, man, there's gotta be an app. There's gotta be something. There's gotta be a program that can help make my life easier here. And I, just to give everybody an example, if you comment on the broadcast, auto agent, we have a message <laughs> that's gonna reply back automatically with a one sheet with virtual assistant inf information for you. Or you could message our page the same message and again, it would auto reply. So it's a way to just streamline, you know, not, have me not having to do work makes me more efficient. Like I, I could have said years ago, send me an email, you know, with automated agent in the subject line and I will reply back with this handout for you. And then now I've made more work for myself and other 15, 20 emails I have to reply to where now I could just say it and then the robots do it automatic. 
Right. Right. What else do you kind of have implemented to kind of help you streamline systems, programs, apps, that kind of stuff besides your CRM that you mentioned? Well, like I will, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll feed, I'll set up a softball for you, you know, with one of them where we couldn't do it with virtual assistants as well with the app does it better. And that app is called showing time. Ooh. You know, I don't know if you have showing time up in your MLS, Yep. but it, yeah, <laughs> it integrates with your MLS. It's, you know, it sets up showings. It just, they have live people in Chicago setting up your showings. They follow up for feedback and then they give you, uh, you know, they aggregate the results. I had my VAs doing this and I couldn't compete. It's only 39 bucks a month for eight listings. So and like all these things as you start going through, you're right, Jamie. Like in that case, an app, there's nothing that can beat that. Nothing. Because the app and tail has so much in it. So that was the uh, that was the layup that, man, that's fantastic. So anyone who's not doing showing time and you're doing your own showings, anyway, that's a <laughs> that's another yeah, uh, I'll that's just another day. Echo, echo that. If you're in the greater Rochester area, we have showing time for free. It's it's a value add as part of your membership at the board and there's still people who aren't using it who sit in my class and they go, I'd rather do it myself. And it's like, oh. no, you shouldn't. And if you look at what, what the client, cause it's all about the client, right? What do their, they, what do they value most? And yeah. when the NAR looks at it, nowhere on the surveys, even agent scheduled my showings. It's not, it doesn't even exist on the survey. Like they could care yeah. less. They just want their property to be shown. And there's right. no way that anybody could say, and prove it to me that they can schedule their showing better than a showing service can. Absolutely. Right? Would you agree? Absolutely. With me? Like the agent can go online or call, right? And then they call, text, and email the seller. And whichever one re replies back the fastest is how it gets confirmed. And then there's a feedback form that's sent out the, the instant that they show the property. And that gets auto, you know, copied into your clients. Like it's so fantastic like i don't know why you would spend like that's man 10 maybe 30 hours a month that you get back just from not having to take those phone calls absolutely and as a buyer's agent just think of, you know how frustrating it is when you're trying to show something and they oh i do it all i mean but that's how we're built like we right. hold even though it hurts or crushes our client and it keeps us busy a lot of times you like to feel busy so these are the things that you really busy. have to have a heart to heart with yourself and, and let go. And, you know, J-Man and I can give you these nuggets, but ultimately you got to implement some of them and they've already done the hard work, you know, showing time and your Rochester board of realtors already paying the bill. So just, just use it, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I don't know how it could be any easier, but some of the tools, you know, there's the, the, if we start at the base level is, you know, if you screencast o -matic is free to record, put the stuff on when you do your doc, do your documentation do it on word or google docs again free well word cost but google docs for free you know initially and right. then uh once you take and even a, a basic crm like wise agent is like 29 bucks a month you can do that so very easy very light then as you take that next step um you move into a CRM, like we use Realvolve now, that has built-in workflows that are built for to hand off and go. Is it and Real Vault, you said? Realvolve CRM, R-E-A-L-V-O-L, Realvolve. Wow, I'm gonna spell this wrong. And we, we just migrated to them because they've, they're built for hands off to, to a virtual assistant. And uh, our online manual now, we use an app it's a program um, called Screen Steps. And why we like Screen Steps so much is because it actually has a, a module for if you're in Asana, if you're in your CRM, if you're in whatever you're in and there's a task and you don't know how to do it, you click the, the extension in Chrome and it comes down and says exactly how to do it and you go right back to your workflow. Because one of the things we were finding is we could never find the task to be done and then how to do it. We had two programs kind of you know, floating hold, around. Hold on, stop right there because this seems so yeah. cool. I, I don't want to kind of glaze over it. So screen steps, tell me again slower because I want to understand okay. it. You're in a step and you don't know what's going on. Right. Screen, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Okay, screen steps. So explain that one more so, time. Okay. So you have a CRM, whichever one you're using, I don't care, or yeah. Asana, and there's 10 steps, for example, how to prepare for a listing. You fill in the docs, send them a pre-listing pack, whatever it is. 
and in, you make an online manual in a program called uh, Screen Steps. You log on and it says one, two, three, four, five, where you make the detailed videos, the photos, the arrows on how to do the process, right? right. Which I told you you could do it on a Google Doc initially, which is where you go over and get your manual, like the old fashioned manual, right? Yeah, yeah. This program, you do it online and then with the, the extension in Chrome, all you do so when you're in your CRM and it says send a pre-listing pack, just you know one line and a check thing, and you don't know how. What does that actually mean? How do I send a pre-listing pack? You click that Chrome extension with Screen Steps and type in send pre-listing, and then it comes up and tells you right in the screen exactly step by step how to do it. And I like it because it goes across platforms. So then if you're in your CRM, but then you go into a checklist like Asana for your personal life, or that's how I separate it, my personals in Asana, and it says reserve tennis for the guys. How do I do that? So you click on that little thing, reserve tennis, and boop, and it says how it's built. Is it, I is mean, it a program or is it screensteps.com? How do they get there? Screensteps, screensteps.com. And this integration has been the holy grail for us because we would have checklists, which are all beautiful, and a lot of CRMs have checklists that are... I mean, it's great, but how do you keep standards of how to do that checklist? And I was always baffled. And I guess companies, big real estate teams do it without a link. It's just like check on the loan docs or send a pre-listing pack and that's it. So with this, this was the connection to where in the same screen, send pre-listing pack. Here are the 10 steps so that you can hand it to a VA. You can hand it to an assistant and have anybody do it because it's, it's documented there all in the same context because keeping two separate to be honest keeping that word doc that's why i say it's a first step it's not the holy grail because keeping a word doc in sync with your checklist is was a challenge as we grew and this solved that challenge okay is that clear jamie i mean i get, I get excited about it i start ranting and raving so i hope no, that's no, clear. No, no. This, this is such good stuff because it's the minutiae it's the it's the details that matter because if we just glaze over and go, here it is, yeah, go do it, then people are gonna get stuck on these little steps that you've you've already found these these pain points and found you know a solution for. So it's important that we I want you to go off on those tangents because it helps us to better understand. What about like the the calendar side of it? So are they using Google Calendar and then just putting stuff in your calendar and that kind of stuff? Is that is that how it works or what are you using? Yes, Google Calendar, and Google is the backbone of all of our stuff because everything syncs with Google. I mean, your my phone, the I even have gone to now uh, Pixel, all Google, and the CRM sync with it. It's kind of like the backbone of the business. So yeah, we use Google Calendar, and the CRMs can sync with Google Calendar as well, or you can go native with it. And then again, I don't, I have them check every day for conflicts, so things start getting scheduled, and you know things start getting crazy. One of the tasks at 4 p.m. every day is they go in and they look seven days out to make sure there are no overlaps. Some, my, uh, my wife shares my calendar, so she'll put in like, you know, we have to go to the recital at six, but I had scheduled an appointment at six. So that's one of their daily tasks because again, they, we just get crazy. So she'll say, hey, what, which one do you want to move? And of course, whichever one that my wife did not put in is the one that gets moved. So that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's how we do it. <laughs> in every household, I believe, Terry. Um, <laughs> so... It's, you know, going along with that with Google, so like any kind of documents, pictures, like listings that you want to put in, all that gets like your photographer goes, takes pictures, then uploads to like Google Drive. They have it on their yeah. end, download it, and put the listing, right? We send them a link that shares for the listing, and they have it. They upload it. It's ready. We've already said with our MLS, we have standards on the order of the pictures and what we want to start with the front and go in. and then da, da, da. So that level of detail is in there. And then, yeah, absolutely, they share, and then we can share links and do whatever we want. Same thing with the uh, with the description. Okay. And then uh, Okima, who's watching right now, she says, I'm driving, so I can't write all the systems. He's going over. Will this be sent via email, um, or where could I find it? What we'll do is anything additional that's not on the VA handout that you requested. Um, I'm sure Terry could just do a Word doc real fast of everything we – or have a VA do it for him. And um, – We'll post it in the comments just as a you know downloadable link or just a PDF there so you can have yep. it, you know, again, because we're just we're doing this to help you guys out. We're not charging at the end of this, there's no sales pitch. I'm not gonna go, hey, and you too can work with Terry for $9.99. Like that's that's bullshit. You don't do that stuff. 
come from a position of value. We're just here to help each other, help each other out. And appreciate you taking the time from your golf game and your tennis, tennis, <laughs> golf and tennis. What else did they do down there? Get a tan. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I wish it were all golf and tennis. We're getting there. We're getting there. No, that's, so is it warm right now? Yeah. Yeah. We're back up into our normal 60 and, and oh. then up to 80 and, uh, you know that's it's good for business. I like hot, like taxes up there and snow. That we, there's nothing better for our business. Yeah, tell them to keep. We want more big government <laughs> up there. It's great for business. We want more snow. We more snow. Both of those are great for our business. So come on down. Whoever's watching, come on down. <laughs> All right. Anything you want to add here at the end? Um, just to to have the the boldness of taking that first step, that little thing that you're going to outsource, even if you have shine and any way we can help, even if it's a little thing to have somebody do for you and put that, that reason why you're doing it, because all forces are going to push you to do things the way you've always done. You know, I have my picture of my daughter there. Uh, maybe I have a picture of your spouse or the, the island that you want to go or whatever it is, the, the gym that you want to do more of or whatever it is. You have to put that there because it's going to be like nails on a chalkboard outsourcing that first thing. But keep that big why there so that you can just do a little bit of time and you'll get there. Yeah, man. Thank, thanks for sure. You can see kind of behind me. I got my kids behind me too. Same thing. So every day when you, you don't want to make that call, you don't want to make that video or you don't want to delegate what you feel like you need to have control over, like be like Elsa, man, let it go, let it go, <laughs> let it go. <laughs> That's another Orlando piece. Come yeah. on, bring the kids down. We got Elsa down here. How can you lose? <laughs> we'll be down soon, man. I, I really appreciate you. And again, thanks everybody for tuning in. If you want to get a one sheet with auto, um, with virtual assistant information, just type auto agent or automated agent. Either one will work in the comments below. We'll reply back with a one sheet and we're going to do an additional one uh, with all the good stuff that Terry brought to us today, all the, all the nuggets. So thanks again, Terry. All right. Thanks. Thanks to you, man. Have a good day, everybody. Make it a great day. All right.